Welcome to our online Easter commemoration. Once again this year we unfortunately cannot gather the way we usually would to commemorate our Patriot dead, but we still hold their memory close and remember the sacrifices that they made in our struggle for a free and united Ireland. Easter is a special time for Republicans as we look back at the men and women who sowed the seeds of freedom and took on an empire. We also remember Derry's Patriot dead and I would like to welcome the families watching with us tonight. We really hope that you enjoy our commemoration. Public Nahern, the provisional government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organised and trained her manhood, through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizens Army. Having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment. And supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying and first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of a right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished that right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms, standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state, and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberties, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens. And declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all of its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until their arms have brought around the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government, representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all our men and women, the provisional government, hereby constituted, will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonor it by cowardice, inhumanity, or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valor and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, Podrick Pierce, Eamon Kent, James Conley and Joseph Plunkett. Derry Brigade, Oglana Hearn, Roll of Honour. 1st Battalion Fian Jared Donaghy, age 17 Ogley, Colm Keenan, age 18 John Stars, age 19 Jimmy Carr, age 19 John McDade, age 16 James Moyne, age 27 Brian Coyle, age 17 Dennis Heaney, age 21. Pat Harkin, 
age 33. Patsy Duffy, age 50. Richard Quigley, age 20. Charles English, age 21. Eddie McSeffrey, age 29. Barney McFadden, age 30. Martin McGuinness, age 66. Second Battalion, Ogley, Joe Coyle, age 45, Tommy McCool, age 43, Tommy Carlin, age 54, Eamon Lafferty, age 19, Eugene McGillan, age 18, Seamus Bradley, age 19, Michael Quigley, age 20, John Brady, age 20, Joe Walker, age 18. Ethel Lynch, age 22. George McBerty, age 24. Charles McGuire, age 20. Phil O'Donnell, age 50. Danny Doherty, age 23. Philip McFadden, age 29. Patrick O'Hagan, age 32. Paddy Deary, age 31. Paul Kinsler, age 31. Paddy Mullen, age 53. Jim Free, age 36. Hugh Duffy, age 55. Dale Moore, age 52. Third Battalion, Ugly, James Junior McDade, age 32. David Russell, age 17. Jared Craig, age 17. Michael Ben Meenan, age 16. Jim Gallagher, age 20. Eamon Bronco Bradley, age 23. Tony Goff, age 24. Damian Doherty, age 57. Four Battalion. Ugly, Jim O'Hagan, age 16. Kieran Fleming, age 25. William Fleming, age 19. Jared Pogi Logue, age 26. Marching down my sack full stream the starry plowing high Here comes the citizen's army with a fist race to the sky Leading them was a mighty man with a mad rage in his eye My name it is James Conley and they didn't come here to die But the fight for the rights of the working class and the small farmer too To protect the proletariat from the bosses and the screws So hold on to your rifles boys, don't give up the dream Public for the working class economic liberties. The champ was up all citizens, the system is a curse. An English boss, a monster, and an Irishman, even worse. 
He'll never lock a seat again And here's a reason why My name it is James Conley And they didn't come here to die But the fight for the rights of the working class And the small farmer too To protect the proletariat From the bosses and the screws Old Lancy Rifles boys Don't give up the dream Of a republic for the working class Economic Liberties over in the GPO, the bullets whizzing by With piercing Sean McDermott, I bid in each other goodbye Off steps our citizen leader, and he rose into the sky My name it is James Conley, and they didn't come here to die But the fate for the rights of the working class and the small farmer too To protect the proletariat from the bosses and the screws Hold on to your rifles, boys, don't give up the dream Public for the working class economic liberties. He brought them to a standstill and the flames lit up the sky to the bullet pierced our leader and we gave up the fight. They shot him and killed me in jail, they'll never stop his cry. My name it is James Conley and I didn't come here to die. But the fight for the rights of the working class and the small farmer too. Take the parole, it's it from the bosses and the screws. Hold on to your rifles, boys, don't give up the dream of a republic for the working class economic. One of the great traditions of Republican solidarity is how we all come together at Easter in various settings throughout Ireland and beyond to remember the men and women of 1916 and all those who gave their lives down through the decades in the cause of Irish freedom. This Easter, just like last year, due to public health considerations and restrictions, we find ourselves having to remember in a different way. Whereas nothing will ever replace that coming together in a spirit of comradeship and friendship to be with the families of our patriot dead, we have found different ways to ensure the memory, the loss of our comrades, is celebrated in a poignant and appropriate manner. Marshin agus ar son cúrla cantar dara, ba wailom falcha cúr rúv galir, agus le falcha spéclata do clan ar a camaradia as brigades dara, tashiv inar sminchi igan am casca shaw. On behalf of the Dairy Corps of Counter, I want to welcome you all here tonight with a very special welcome to the families of our Patriot dead on this, the eve of Easter Sunday. I hope you will join us tomorrow as Uchtaran Sinn Féin, Mary Lou MacDonald will give the main oration at our online national commemoration. In the past 12 months, many of our relatives, friends and comrades have passed away, some due to COVID-19, and all too frequently we have found ourselves unable to attend wakes, funerals and pay our respects and tributes in the manner we are all well accustomed to. So tonight I want to extend our solidarity and enduring empathy to all those who have lost loved ones. Ta shiv in our smichi, August Tamwitz Livsha, Igan Am Brunak Shaw. This year marks the 105th anniversary of the Easter Rising and the 100th anniversary of the partition of our country. It is also the 40th anniversary of the 10 men who died in hunger strike in the hits blocks of Long Cash, who had defended the integrity of our struggle and defeated Britain's attempt to criminalise us. We remember the selfless sacrifice of Bobby Sands, Frank Hughes, Raymond McCreesh, Patsy O'Hara, Joe MacDonald, Martin Hurston, Kevin Lynch, Kieran Doherty, Thomas McElwee and Mickey Devine. In Derry we will see the 50th anniversaries of Ogley, Eamon Lafferty and Jim O'Hagan and the 40th anniversaries of Ogley, Charles Maguire and George McBurdy. Ta siad i mesk leagra na hern. Easter affords us the time and opportunity to not only remember, it provides us the time to reflect, to recommit ourselves to the many tasks and challenges that lie before us. Political struggle is often likened to a journey, often taking us into uncharted waters, 
and with the necessity to plan, to prepare, therefore ensuring that whatever steps we take forward will make us stronger, that we are fortified and strengthened by minimizing risk and avoiding failure. No journey, no political struggle is without risk or uncertainty, but with good leadership and strategic vision, many of the obstacles we face can be confronted and solutions sought. That is why we are in the strong position we find ourselves today because of leadership and with it strategic vision. So today as we reflect back over the time at the sacrifices made by many of our comrades and friends, we know that they were guided by their fearlessness and courage. So the road that we are now on is one well travelled and one which has brought us to the cusp of achieving an Ireland united and free based on the vision of the proclamation. We have that sense of fulfilment that the ideals of the men and women who marched into battle in Dublin that Easter morn have never dimmed. And indeed, they are now much to the fore of political discourse and the ongoing work of Republican activists in this phase of our struggle. When the men and women of 1916 came together, they united under the flag of the Republic. Tom Clark from the Fenian and Republican Brotherhood tradition, his views shaped and influenced by years of armed resistance and political imprisonment. James Connolly, the socialist, who believed that nationhood was undiminished if it wasn't underpinned by equality, rights and economic sovereignty. Countess Markovich, a socialite, a feminist, who found her place among the poor and working people and fighting for women's rights. Podrick Pierce, the Gaelic scholar, the poet, often described as the idealist, and yet who stated very clearly that Ireland would only ever be free in the tradition of tone when the link with Britain was broken. That it would take an armed insurrection, that heroic deed which would ignite the flame that would never, ever dim. So all of them, Fenians, socialists, idealists, united under the eloquence, the clarity, the vision of Fublak Beheren, as they declared that the Republic would guarantee civil and religious liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens, cherishing all the children of the nation equally. Their courage, their foresight, standing before the might of the British Empire and its army, knowing the consequences, and yet they dared to dream, and ensure that by her heroic deeds, the flame was ignited. That mantle was carried forward by the volunteers we commemorate here tonight. And just like the men and women of 1916, they too came from different backgrounds with different political viewpoints. But they were united in their desire to earn British rule in Ireland and that the Irish people and the Irish people alone were sovereign and indefeasible. The flame they inherited from the volunteers of 1916 the Tam War and down through the decades now burns at its brightest. They stood in opposition to those who 100 years ago partitioned our country, which cast many into a northern state where injustice and discrimination prevailed, where nationalists, republicans and socialists were treated as second-class citizens. Partition was wrong then, and anyone who holds any allegiance to the ideals of the proclamation will find within it the reasons why it is still wrong today. And while partition is in place, the vision of the proclamation will remain unfulfilled. So as we go forward, recommitting ourselves to the many challenges that lie ahead, we do so in the knowledge that the goal of a United Ireland is within reach. Nothing in political struggle is inevitable, so we must continue in our work, bring in our analysis, the strength of our argument, and joining with others as we unite under the common banner that is now and now is the time for the people to decide their own future. For us as Republicans, we strive to create an Ireland where in the words of Martin McGuinness, all citizens will be governed as equals. This guarantees that the vision of the proclamation becomes our living reality and that is the most fitting and lasting tribute to those we commemorate this Easter time. Let us all go forward united and strong, firm in our resolve, and let us be the generation who finish the journey. And in the words of Bobby Sands, it will then we will see the rising of the moon. Berge Pua, August Garou, Mil Mai Agaf, Galir. 
Shit, I'm feeling I fall. I tough, we are legging. We in the slough. Heart in the running cool. We avoid facing. Shanchi Roshin Cher Fasta Niyok for Fwin Tirana Fwin Anok Daim Savar Navwil Lege Nargil Hong Bash No Sail Lagana Shrek we love our now be live shall live carnic oh